All right. Well, it is my uh, very great pleasure today to welcome Denley Logie to the Maggot Bar in our continuing oral history project. Welcome, Dewey. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks. Let's Thanks. start at the right at the beginning. How and when and where did you first see rugby? I first saw rugby at the University of Montana. I came to school in 68 as a freshman, lived in the dorm, uh, and a bunch of the guys in the dorm were rugby players, or they were trying to get started with the rugby team, and they invited me to come along. And, and always looking for something to do I thought well this might be fun and I never was an athlete I didn't think of myself as an athlete I didn't play football but I thought this might be something and they talked about how much fun it was so that's where I got the experiences or the start and when you first played it what was your idea about hey what is this and why are you now still a rugby enthusiast 60 years later. Well, when I started <laughs> playing, it took us about uh, three years to get our first victory. So there was always that goal out there. Will we, will we get a victory? But it was, it was a lot of camaraderie and a lot of fun. It wasn't uh, the attitude that uh, you got to beat people up. It was just out there participation. And that's a lot of things that I've done through life, playing softball, basketball. I was never great at it. It was just to participate. And this was a great sport to participate in. And when did you get a position right away? Did they go, oh, you're this for sure? I or? started out as a hooker. Okay. And and that was uh, partly, I was a little bit lighter then and the props were a little bit bigger. And, and uh, that's, let me say, that's where I started as a hooker. And that's a really fun position to play because you play such an integral part of the game. Do you, something you remember about when you first started playing, like, hey, this is for me, I like this. I just, Part of the idea was just having fun yeah. on the field and off the field, and, and it was a great bunch of guys, and uh, nobody was a real standout, a real jock, and, and that right. was it. Just fit into that participation sport. And did you have a coach back then, or were you guys kind of coaching yourselves? Or? Uh, there was a coach. We've had kind of. There were some kind of unofficial coaches that came along and uh, that had played before, but quite a few of the guys that I started with had never played before. So it took a little bit of guideline guidance, um, but we didn't have enough games or enough practices to really for the coaching to do much good anyway. <laughs> and who did you guys play back then? I mean, was it some of the same clubs that we know today or? There or were no Montana different? teams. There okay. were no teams in Idaho. Um, there was a team in Ellensburg, Washington, uh, but we tended to go to Canada uh, okay. and, and played Calgary, Lethbridge. Uh, so road trips were part of it right from the very get-go just by the nature of being in Montana. Right, but not, <laughs> but not many road trips either. We really okay. didn't have the connections to make a lot, of, a, a lot of games happen at first. And when did it start sort of coming together where you guys started getting more games and started getting some victories? How long was that into your tenure? Well, kind of after the first victory, <laughs> we started looking more and people started recognizing that there was Montana rugby and and we ended up out Spokane ended up getting a team for okay. a short time we played out in Spokane uh, and they say we still continued mostly up in Canada and uh, all the way up to Edmonton for the Rugger Fest which was yeah. uh, and remember all, a lot of the Montana players had a Rugger Fest sticker in the back of their back window of their vehicle yeah I've, I've played in the Rugger Fest up there it's it was fun even then too and I'm sure it is as well now but when you guys uh, were initially forming, when what was the differential when it became uh, not a university team and the I idea became, hey, look, we have to form another club because guys are getting older, graduating. When did that idea kind of germinate? I, I think it started maybe about 74. Okay. Um, I remember I wasn't in school anymore and quite a few of us weren't in school anymore. And, and I was, at times I was feeling a little bit guilty. We were called, the Montana Rugby Club. Okay. It wasn't the University of Montana Jesters. We were the oh, okay. Montana Rugby Club. Uh, we did not want to be associated with the university athletes at the time. Ah, okay. uh, and they didn't give us much money. We got some club sport money. And we chose colors of green and gold, so we were separated from the university. But as we got out of school, uh, it was starting, we were starting to take some of the positions away from some of the university players that were that were trying to play, and, right. and uh, 
we figured it was time that we could actually support two teams. So we started looking at it probably, like I say, 74, 75. And were, who, who were some of those guys in those early years in that 74, 75 when you're starting to make the, the changeover? I know you're one of the original maggots, but who are some of the guys that you remember from that time period? Well, we had, uh, of course, Skip was, Skip was there, Cousin was there. Uh, we had um, Rob Farmer was around at that time. Uh, we had a few. I, I remember Lee Dilly was playing for the university, and and he was, he and I were kind of in competition for hooking. Uh huh. Okay. And so I remember when the maggot started, he was he was uh, playing at university, and I would come in, and a lot of times I wouldn't make practice because I would be in St. Regis or or working construction somewhere. Right. But I would come in and play, and I I felt a little guilty about that. And, yeah. Uh, there were. Uh, I, I'm trying to think back on on some of the old pictures that we have, but uh, I'm not. The names aren't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll, you'll you'd recognize them, but yeah. yeah. But, but we had uh, uh, like when we had a gathering up at, at cousins here a few weeks ago. We had some of the old guy boots and and Maurice and and uh, uh, it was some of the early folks that went on the first mega trip too. They were they were part of that transition. And was there an actual time when you guys decided, okay, now we're the maggots or, or, or we're a separate club? Was there that a defining moment or did it just kind of naturally happen? Well, it naturally happened, but it, we did make the distinction. Okay. Yeah, it, it, we said, okay, we're going to be, and, and I think it was, uh, we'll, we'll blame Skip on repeating what the Canadian <laughs> says, those maggoty Americans coming up. And so, so we went to that and we... We made the insignia kind of off the All Blacks uh, fern, and and that was a direct result of Tubby being there, or it, his connection to New Zealand. Yes, yeah. brought us brought us in. He was okay. uh, he was quite an influence on all of us as far as our playing. Um, he maybe would not want to take credit for the attitude. <laughs> I think we already had the attitudes, and and part of that again, I think, is is part of my interest was the fact that we. We didn't consider ourselves the jocks. Right. We, we were there participating and having fun. And uh, we played, I remember, uh, some of the California trips that the university took. And I wasn't able to go on all of them. I was one of those that had to pay for my own college. So I worked right. on right. <laughs> over the break. And so I didn't get to make some of those trips. And I, I lost out on a little bit of that history. But I do remember a few of them. We play some of the California teams teams and there were actually there were old football players and jocks there right. and it was a different mental attitude playing against them and i also when we were university we played uh spokane had a tournament in the spring uh and we went over and played in that and and we played against the wazoo basically football team in the okay. spring and i remember their attitude was totally different and they attack you after you're out of bounds. Right. And I remember as often as I could, they had a fellow by the name of Fritz. And, and if he would tackle me out of bounds, I'd I'd get up and make sure I stepped on his leg and then say, nice tackle, but a little late. <laughs> yeah. you know, and make those points to those guys. Yeah, but yeah. I, I wasn't intimidated. They, I was... I bucked enough bales that I was strong enough right. that, that they weren't going to hurt me. So. Right. And, and, you know, it's one of those things. I think that attitude probably still exists to this day with football players coming into the game. Was it more so then? Was the, the prime other, the majority of the other teams you played, were they rugby players or were they kind of uh, uh, football players who were moonlighting as rugby players in the states and a little different in canada i'm guessing yeah the canadian teams were rugby players they'd started a lot of those right. had started in grade school most of the u.s teams didn't have a chance to start at a young age so they started probably after their football careers were done either from high school or even in college okay. and and uh, we did play against some uh a couple Pro football players too that were right. were done, but that didn't bother me. By then, uh, later on in the game, then I started uh, actually the first years as a maggot. I was still hooking some, but I would also prop. Okay. And, and then we had an interchangeable line, and sometimes 
it was fun to play prop against football players because they were right. so easy to outmaneuver. <laughs> right. <laughs> you could get into their heads so easily that yeah. uh, they were ineffective. Right, that's perfect, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, I, you, you mentioned earlier, uh, Skip, and the and the story of you know the Canadians using the maggoty term. I've heard that as both a true story, an apocryphal story. W what's your take on it? Is, it's how a did good, it come It's back? a good story. It's a good story, all right. <laughs> it, it doesn't matter whether it's true or not. It, right. it led to our name, and I think whether it was true or not, or after the fact, uh, I think it's very fitting. All right. I think. So that mid-70s kind of time period when the maggots got going, sounds like getting matches was one of the hardest things. It, that early part of the development of the Montana Rugby Union, when did that occur? You know, I can't really put the dates to it. Uh, we ended up, I know we had, uh, there was a team up in Great Falls we went up, and then that team sort of disappeared for a few years and then came back again. Um, basically probably around the Air Force and, and Cousins connection uh, yeah. up there. And, and then Bozeman for a while tried to start and then they kind of faded and then came back. And, and Billings, we did some some games down in Billings. Kalispell started entering into it with the Moose. Uh, and so we tried to make the connections in state as often as we could. And, and I remember playing in the snow in Butte on the St. Patty's <laughs> Day. And, uh, but we, we played a couple, or a game down in Dillon, I remember trying huh. to pull in uh, Dillon to, to get started. They some of the some, Western guys? Or, yeah, yeah, they had some football players that were, actually kind of had the right attitude and wanted to start, but that never quite materialized. Yeah. Uh, but we had some fun on some of those trips. Yeah, I'll bet. So, so let's talk about the development of the bus. Uh, what was there, originally I'm guessing it was mostly just guys driving, right? There was. We we would all take separate vehicles. You or, right. you know load up a vehicle and go. And then and then the California trip is actually probably what started the buses. Oh, okay. uh, I think it's Tamel De Morris was a dealer here in town. They had a bus okay. that the team rented, the university okay. rented, for the California trip. And and then there were some other uh, buses that got rented. And then Nick Kelmus and I decided well. Why don't we buy a bus and rent it to the team? <laughs> we rented it to the university, and and uh, it was an old ski bus from Belgrade. Okay. And it was it was a good bus at the time. I think it had about sixty thousand miles on it. We bought it up in in Helena, and then as the years came on, and I'm, it was in the old Maggot News. Just just read it a while ago, and I'm I'm trying to think if it was eighty five or eighty eight. We offered the team the bus. Right. And it was uh, $500 and free lifetime membership. And you got your money and, and worth and out of that it one. Was, it, was <laughs> kind of, it was kind of a controversy at the time. But it turns out the bus has been such a social part of the team. And, and early on, actually it even used to get cleaned after most of the trip. It used early on. Uh, and it did get used for forest service a few times. And, and then... Uh, so the first bus went on quite a while. The second bus, they decided to replace the first one. And then actually the third bus I bought at a Forest Service auction, knowing okay. eventually the team would need another bus. Right, right. And so, Back up. <laughs> so I bought, it was a green green bus. That okay. was the third one. And I just held it for a couple of years and then finally the team needed it and I sold it for the, the cost of what I paid. Do you know what year that was or approximately? I. All the years run together. Yeah, it, that would have been probably in the in the nineties. Yeah, um, just just to guess, but not yeah. not sure. But uh, it turns out that bus ran for a while, and then um, the one they have now is the fifth. I believe it's okay. the fifth bus, and this one's diesel, and that's a little advancement too. But the one had. I think the second bus had an automatic transmission, and that was a mistake. Yeah, it didn't work too didn't well work too with well. The, yeah. the the grades and things yeah, in, yeah. in Montana, I'm guessing. And and there was, uh, with the bus, it, it, there was always at least one person that was uh, supposed to be the sober driver. Right. And then we also had quite a few CDLs. You had, yeah. You had to have the CDL for... To do that. Yeah, I still have my 
bus endorsement. I haven't driven the rugby bus for a few years. <laughs> Number but, of years, but yeah. So the the road tripping part of it, uh, I guess, must have eventually morphed into that idea. I, th uh, I think it was 78, you guys went on your first international tour and you were part of that one. What was, yes. what was the genesis of that? How'd that go? I think basically Rex, Rex had always, you know, said come down, come to New Zealand and he set up set up a tour on that end that oh, okay. he, he tried to match up teams that fit us f physically and socially Okay. Uh, from some of his old students down there and, and uh, set up, we had a great tour, we were there 30 days and the first 10 days we kind of traveled our own, on our own and we, uh, every, everybody traveled wherever they wanted and met up with whoever they wanted, Sweetie and I ended up we had decided we were going to go to the North Island and do some fishing, and it was about two days later, everybody else showed up right. there because <laughs> nobody had a real plan. Right. Right? And then we ended up down the South Island and going to some of the glaciers, and and pretty soon we'd run in. You'd run yeah. in maggots all over the country those first 10 days. And, yeah. then, and then we got together, and then we traveled uh, by by train. and Okay. Uh, had, it was it was a great tour. We actually did win. I think we won four games. Oh wow! Do you remember any of the teams you played? Or uh, Kuiper Flats was one where uh, that was toward the end of the tour, and that was uh, that was a great social evening. Yeah. <laughs> but I remember Christchurch was a, we took a horrible beating. Uh, they they ran us. Uh, hard and it yeah. was a, a college team that, that ran us hard and I do remember Dun Eden we had uh, that was where Rex was from and he right. set up an evening for us at this social club uh, uh, we had saunas and things like that okay. and there was a rule that you had to had to wear a towel always. Right. They didn't want the nudity around. So, right. of course, maggots in true fortune. We made turbans out yeah. of our towels. Yeah, wearing a towel. <laughs> we were wearing the towels. And there were a few straight-laced people that were uh, kind of wondering about this. A little bunch. shock by it, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But it was, it was actually a, a fantastic tour that we had. And then you've been on a, a bunch of the subsequent tours, right? The Bahamas. Yeah. The Bahamas. Uh, we went to the Bahamas in that was in 1980. Oh, okay. And that was a, an interesting tour. Uh, Eastern Airlines had a a deal on airline flights, unlimited travel for 300. I think it was 325. Oh wow. Yeah, but for three weeks. But you had to stay two places overnight. That was, oh, okay. Otherwise you could jump around. Right. But you had to travel two people in it in, together. Oh, okay. So Johnny Morton and I traveled together. We went to Denver to see his folks and we went to Arizona to see my uncle and we went to Disneyland for a couple of days. Then we went to the Bahamas and, right. and met everybody there yeah. in the tournament. We didn't do so well but we had a great time. Yeah. I remember that we played a team, well there was a team from New York there and they were pretty stuffy yeah. and and the bus in in the Bahamas time didn't really mean too much so yeah. the bus would be 15 minutes late or half yeah. hour late to yeah. take you to the game well you knew the game wasn't going to start till you got there right yeah they can so we just team. put somebody on lookout and everybody else waited in the bar or whatever by the pool yeah but these New York guys had just ruined their trip because Timing. Oh, got to be everything structured. Yeah. So we saw a real difference in in east west. Yeah, attitudes. But there was a team from Minneapolis. They were they were a good team. Then we met up with the team from Easter England, and that's what set up our tour for 1983. And and what was that tour? That was uh, basically traveling around England. We went over to Wales too. We had a, okay. a team uh, that we played. Uh, was at Cardiff, I think. Uh, was the name of that was it was basically another social okay. social trip and we there were uh, all the trips there were a few women that went along on the trips okay as, as they they called them my harem some of them but yeah, yeah. That, that, was, that was that was just a big joke right uh, but uh, it was it was a great social yeah. tour as well as uh, as playing too the the Isher, Isher team um, kind of took us under their wing and, yeah, cool uh, they they enjoyed the maggot. We weren't. Uh, we were a little, had a little more frivolity than they did, and that they were used to. And they they talked about how they'd kind of lost some of that. Yeah. You know, in, the, in the England. 
So now you've, you've traveled around the world, played rugby, seen people, seen other teams. What is it that gives this club, the Maggots, just that little something different that is obviously so enjoyable to so many people that have played here over the years or people that come in contact with the Maggots through Maggot Fest or, or through touring? It really is something different, isn't it? I, I think it is. Nobody, nobody really judges anybody about how they act or what they do. Um, right. You you pull together on the field for sure. Uh, a lot of differences, um, but but always pulled together and really sucked it up when you needed to. Played with a lot of heart. But then, what just happened this last spring now before the Maggot Fest, uh, a gathering of of some of the old boys, and yeah. and it was like. You had the conversation yesterday. You left off yesterday. You're right, right. back in, in the same. I mean, you made such tight friendships that uh, through the years, and I think that's it's the camaraderie. And I, I feel a little bit bad that I I'm still missing out on the new guys. I haven't met a lot of the, right. the new younger guys. It's harder. It, yeah, yeah. And, and when you don't play, and I ended up, yeah. I quit in in '86, crushed vertebrae in my neck, ah. and quit because of that. And so I didn't even come around for a few years because it kind of bothered me to watch. Yeah. But since then, uh, yeah, I've, I've met some of the younger guys and got to know yeah. them, and, and they're great guys too. Yeah. But but that old camaraderie is is what really, and and I think the new guys have the same amongst themselves. Yeah. And, and you do so many things socially together. I mean, yeah. our the old guys used we used to ski together. We go cross country skiing. We. Uh, just did so many things. We played softball. We had, had a uh, co-ed team here in Missouri okay. for about 20 years. Oh, wow, I didn't know that. It was kind of a base score of, yeah. uh, of old maggots and, and maggot friends. And so it's that social thing that I think keeps everybody together. And what's the, what's the same about when you started and now? What do you feel that's the same outside of the camaraderie? Because I think that kind of goes through in time. But... What do you what do you see that makes you think oh that's just like we had it back in the day well I, I think you know everybody plays plays hard on the field you play yeah. the game and then after the game you you're able to talk to that person and we used to try to learn what they did to us or they try to learn right. what we did to them uh, and I, I'm not sure if that happens that's I don't I don't see that but that's because I'm a little removed from that right but I think the idea of, of uh, the enjoyment after the game and the enjoyment the game as itself. Uh, what, there are some differences. I don't see We used to go to some place and play and we'd maybe play two or three games in a weekend and, right. and now they that's a little bit different. They don't don't do that I don't think as much they go yeah. play and then come back home But if there still is that party yeah. and the camaraderie and, and it's it's still a clean sport and I think yeah. that to me is the important part of it. If people are, they're in it for the sport, not to hurt somebody. Right. And I know you must run into a lot of people where you're the only rugby player that they know kind of thing. And so how do you, how do you explain it to them? What do you tell them, the person who doesn't know anything about rugby and finds out that Dewey plays rugby? What do you, how do you explain it to them? Well, if they, if they ask about some of the, the laws, the, the rules, I'll, I'll explain you know, just basically, because most people know football, and just right. explain that you, uh, you no no passes going forward, no blocking, uh, and uh, wrapping tackles, and you can't play the ball. Once you hit the ground, you got to release it, um, and and those kind of basic things I, I try to inform them on. Uh, as far as the other thing, I do talk about the attitude. I say yeah. it's it's. Uh, you know, they say it's the game uh, for for referees played by gentlemen. I, I can't really say we're all gentlemen, but, <laughs> but I, I think we do have that different mental attitude that that you're there. Uh, you're just there to play together, and and yeah. you know we had a lot of wrestlers came out and played. And wrestlers are very good because of the tackling, right. and that's more of an individual sport too. And they aren't out there to hurt people too, and so they make. Great rugby player. Jimmy Beck is one example of that. I think a lot of good wrestlers become hookers, actually, it seems like to me, just over the years that I've run into a lot. And that makes a lot of sense. Body control. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And maneuvering, yeah. kind of swinging and hanging underneath. There's things have changed in the game. Now, I, I 
the scrums bother me a little bit right. <laughs> because in our day you just sat and you you pushed and yeah. there was some bulls coming together right and, and that was part of your intimidation right. um, a lot of things went on and, and <laughs> <laughs> the dark arts yeah yeah <laughs> armpit hairs you did you knew how to pull, pull armpit hairs yeah. and things like that yeah and, and I was lucky I was the fact that I bucked so many bales that I had pretty right. strong back and legs and, yeah, right. and a short short legs so I could get under people especially when I went to the propping right uh, and I could get I could lift I remember this full of you Paris I was a he was played for the Philadelphia Eagles, but when he'd come back to Missoula, there was a cool blue team they called it here in okay. Missoula, and they were more football oriented okay. as far as mental. But they'd always want him to prop, and and he was about six seven. <laughs> He's, and he knew he didn't want to prop no. <laughs> because he knew I had the leverage on him. But right. Those are the the things that you know I I would enjoy that, but I it. it uh, always the strength in my legs really helped. Do you have any playing memories that really stick out? I mean, some people remember their first try, some people remember the first win uh, of championship victory in some state title game or something. Anything that sticks out in your mind that is something that's right at the forefront even even these many years later? Well, we have the controversial kicks in the <laughs> first state championship. Okay, tell me about that. Yeah, we, <laughs> the maggots beat the university Okay. Uh, by a score of six to three, and it was on penalty kicks. Oh, wow. And I kicked the penalty kicks, but one of the in Hollywood, right. who became the maggot, and, and yeah. Skip was on the university <laughs> side as well. Uh, Nick was <laughs> the lifetime member, but he wasn't. Yeah. The, he was the referee, and, and oh, he said okay. the, the one penalty kick wasn't through the mark, and called it. So oh. the, even that was talked about this spring. Right. Uh, so there was real controversy around that. There were a couple other kicks too that were missed, but yeah. but that one uh, it should yeah, it yeah. have been six six or was it six three? And right. So yeah. That yeah. one sticks out just because the there's a little bit of controversy. The controversy is still alive. Yeah. 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 So. But I, I think. Um, you know, we had in, in, I think that was Kuiper Flats, we played against the Maori, some retired Maori All Blacks. Okay. We had a, we had a very solid team that won of, of maggots in yeah. that one game. And we, uh, that was a, a physical hard game. And I can't remember the, the final score on that one, but it was just, right. it was one of those games that everybody played hard, solid. Right. Yeah. Solid. Any players that you remember that for that were just again really stick out because they were exceptional or because they were odd or well pig pen <laughs> okay <laughs> uh, I worked I worked at Shakey's when I was in school and and just to make money in yeah and I got a job there and I was a little messy with the pizza sauce it would get on a few things and yeah. about a month later pig pen Jim Erickson yeah. Uh, uh, wanted a job and so I went and talked to the boss and I said this is a good guy yeah and so he came to work and they and within two days they said well you're not pig pen anymore he is <laughs> he had, he had sauce all over a lot more places than I did but yeah. that's uh, another guy that that the, the camaraderie part yeah. um, I went back to North Dakota and, and got a phone call and my dad had, had uh, gotten hurt and he had some hay that needed to be raked and, and I was in North Dakota and, and Pigpen had never been out to my place but I knew his background, a little bit of farming from on his grandfather's place and I called him up and he drove out to say, I told my mother, I said, you might wonder when he <laughs> comes to the yard, but he'll be a good guy. Yeah. Well, he got on the tractor, he took care of the hay and stuff, hadn't been out there before and that's the kind of things, yeah. the connections. but. The other end, Pigpen, and, and there was John Stevenson, um, yep. and I used to, we played the front row, and there were times, oh, okay. that, this was one game against Snake River, um, they were Caldwell, Idaho, and they were some footballers and a little bit of an attitude, and yeah. so the, the first scrum, we we turned our heads and kissed him on the cheek <laughs> <laughs> just for, for a little attitude and then whoever would get to the scrum first would put their arms up and they were the hooker ah uh, okay 
and that kind of shook them up. Right. And, and hey, John, John, and Pickman and I could could interchange that. Right. Because uh, we were all props used to propping. Right. But we can interchange and, and we could hook too. So that was kind, kind of, of throw a, a little. Yeah, bit. it did throw <laughs> because they never knew yeah. who was going to be hooking or who was setting up. But, right. Uh, some of those kinds of things you had, and that was our team that would do that kind of stuff. A lot of other teams wouldn't even consider that. Who's the best rugby player you ever played with, with the Maggots? Besides yourself. Besides myself, uh, I would have to say it's these two guys sitting right over here. And, and oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Skip in the back line and Cousin had bony elbows uh, <laughs> on the, the lineouts. Uh, and his up and unders were amazing. Uh, they, it was a lot of fun. Yeah. Ah, cool. And then, uh, what's your next rugby adventure? What are you What are you gonna do? Well, I, I don't know. That you know, I went to uh, the team went back to New Zealand, uh, but I wasn't playing anymore. And and the team went to France, and the team yep. went to Australia, and I went on those trips right. as the old guy, and and a lot of fun, an yeah. awful lot of fun. Yep. And I, but I just didn't have an interest to go on on this next trip. This next taking. French trip, yeah. 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 I, France was a little tougher as far as the communications. Right. And uh, I've got enough other things going on that right. uh, it just didn't fit well, and I was a little out of the communications on it. Right. But depending on uh, what the next trip, I, I, and I can't, I don't know where the next. I think trip it's Australia is the next yeah. one. See, yeah. and I would consider that again. Yeah. That was a, that was a good one, and I'm always keep thinking in the spring, but I've been doing other things in the spring. Uh, but I, I need to get back on that bus and. Yeah do some of those. I just did one. I went to Seattle and uh, I, I had a great time, but I was really glad I was flying home Sunday. <laughs> well, that's, that's the thing. I, I might have outgrown the bus. You know, and it would be the safest to drive, I guess, because right. uh, the activities. And, and, you know, they aren't. Well, when you're younger, it doesn't matter how right. dirty the bus is. And, right. Yeah. But those bus trips were always great fun. Great fun. And, you know, the card games, you'd have scores on the ceilings right. and things like that. That hasn't changed. There's no. still some version of that going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hey, so I know you've served in the legislature for a few terms now. And what what is it? I know this is a weird question, but what about being a maggot and a rugby player pre helped prepare you for kind of the rough and tumble of politics? Because I know you're not a natural long-term politician, right? So uh, and what then, was I, it? I say this to few people. There's there are a few of them. There there are some bullies around there. And I uh -huh. said, you're not going to intimidate me in any way, right? You know, physically or or mentally, you're not going to intimidate me because I've seen it all. I've done it all. And right. I think I probably have more patience. Maybe I have too much patience at some. I I, I tolerate just because there are things you can't change about people and so right. I just I just tolerate it I don't necessarily I can't say I accept it right but I have to tolerate it and I think that's part of my personality so it maybe that relates a little to the rugby maybe it relates to more my personality but but as far as um, Nothing can surprise. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think I could surprise a lot of people, right. but, but nothing. And, and you know, I have a kind of a wild, wild, wild sport coat. Well, yeah. And I've worn that. I've worn that a few se days on session, and I yeah. have some wild ties. And uh, right. a couple times I've had Hawaiian shirt under my sport coat, and. <laughs> Those that's probably some of the rugby stuff coming out. Yeah, of the maggot formal wear, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. and uh, doesn't matter what people think about it. That's what I'll what I'll do. Now, do you remember kind of how that idea started of maggot formal wear? Is that a, was that an idea that just happened, or we one of the early days we had a bottles party. We we thought well, we're we're going to be like the fraternities and we're going to drink hard liquor, and so okay. we had a bottles party. <laughs> and maggots can't handle that very yeah. well. And, and that sort of evolved into the maggot formal, and I, I, I know there's the old picture of when we were up in Lethbridge and out in the field, we all had our, our outfits on. Oh, uh, okay. And uh, they were kind of classy but corny. I mean, they, uh, okay. weren't, they weren't just wild stuff. They were just, they were, like I say, classy yeah. and corny, but uh, 
uh, that's kind of where it evolved from. from okay. And that Lethbridge, we that was kind of the start of our fall season. We always hit oh, the okay. Lethbridge hoop up, and we'd I'll go up there. Uh, and we couldn't win the chugging contest, so we <laughs> drop grasshoppers in the beer first, and then try to <laughs> try to see if that see if that would intimidate them a little better, or right. whatever. But it didn't help us. I remember the grass, <laughs> grasshopper tried to claw out of my throat. It's <laughs> like I'm getting out of here. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, the maggot formal, and then and then the awards banquet and everything kind of happened off of that, but. And is that something that goes back all the way to the beginning, or or sort of late seventies, or? Uh, it was in the seventies. We let's see, we were in in the Seventh Street house. Um, that must have been in about seventy two or seventy three. Okay, so we're very the, early on yeah, when we had the bottles party. Okay, and then the and then the you know the end of the year party kind of thing was that the same thing, or did it yeah, evolve that, into the no, awards was, and? Well, that was it. It kind of all, yeah, it yeah. all morphed into that but okay. yeah they were i think i lost a girlfriend at the bottles party <laughs> and, you know things like that yeah yeah, yeah. awesome the, now the good memories yeah <laughs> this is uh skip brought this in do you remember where this is that was over here at the university um or not at the university but i think over by sentinel high school oh, okay where fest used to be right I yeah think. yeah and, and I don't even remember for sure the year, but my guess it was probably in the 80 or 81, something like that. Skinny, oh, okay. skinny guy. Yeah, look at that. that was, yeah. And the uh, obviously the Rosettas in there, was that, you, you said that that was a, kind of an early addition. Was, is that, what, what did you guys wear initially? The very first time you were maggots, what did, what did you wear, jersey-wise? You know, I to tell you the truth, I can't even remember for sure huh. when when the jerseys came out okay. and, and if they were before. I know when we went to New Zealand, we had sweaters and okay. we had the jerseys by then. Okay, that was seventy eight. Okay, and yeah, we had black sweaters with the insignia on, which I'm not sure if there are many of them around anymore. But we went to England, we had we had sweaters as well. That okay. was kind of you know. Uh, the formal countries that had been it so long, the gentlemen, that was what they did. And they all had their clubhouses, and that's the other thing. I remember even New Zealand, we kept saying, we need a clubhouse someday. Right. Someday. Right. And I know uh, you're involved in this uh, idea and that that's now come to fruition. What do you see uh, the difference now of having a clubhouse? Where does that put the maggots going forward, do you think? What, what's different about this club now that there's a clubhouse? Well, I think there is a place that you can gather and I think there's supposed to be the, the summer picnic and, and then when the the fest was going on, like the Thursday night game, right. we just walked across the street. <laughs> and, and here we were, we had the back backyard, we right. had our own yard, we had the patio, we were sitting there telling stories. And yeah. uh, it's it's, you don't have to, it's not like the bar crowd, uh, right. It's it just so much more relaxing. Now, you know, the clubhouses we saw in a lot of these other towns, they have their, their pitch there as well. And, and, right. all, and some of them had cricket clubs right. and they yeah. worked out of their same clubhouse. And so we're in a little bit different that way. But I, I still think, you know, they have the, there, there's the horseshoe pit out here and right. there's the cornhole stuff that they do. And, you know, the bus is able to be stored here. And boy, the That's yard, big. The yard really looks nice now. Today yeah. it really, really yeah. looks good, and it, it's just nice to say that's our clubhouse. And, and yeah. the New Zealand team that one year, or the New Zealand uh, sister city, Palmerston North, I think that was about four years ago. We had a yeah. tent set up in the backyard, and and they came, and their city officials came, and we had a a, a meal for them, and. You know, it, it says a little more. It, it, yeah. We're organized. And I remember the early days, the newspaper would add things about uh, the maggots that weren't always so complimentary. <laughs> and and uh, when the maggot fest was going on, it was, you know, they liked pictures yeah. of the blood and they liked, right, right. They liked uh, yeah. the, the drunken debauchery. But right. that's, there's more to it than that. Yeah. No, absolutely. We, I guess uh, kind of one of my last questions is how do you feel that being a part of this from the beginning, I, 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 wouldn't, I wouldn't guess that it's changed you, but how has it complemented you and, and, and filled you out as a person? 
Well, I, I, I think I take, take pride in the fact that uh, we brought something to Montana, really. Right. You know, it was Missoula, but, but to Montana. And I think the fact we're keeping it going now, I, I, like I say, I'm, I'm busy in so many other things, that, right. like the youth rugby and that kind of stuff. I haven't been involved, but I'm, I'm tickled that there are people that, that are, and right. we brought those people into the fold. So I, I think it's um, it's a good sport, and it's uh, more people you see now on TV. You see okay. the national. I remember when we went to New Zealand, the gals that went along on our trip, 78, they'd be passing the ball on the sidelines. Yeah. The old, the old New Zealand guys were <laughs> like, oh, what, what? No, this isn't a woman's sport. <laughs> and, and now, look what it is. I mean, New Zealand. Yeah. And, and so... Some of that, maybe we even had a little influence on that. Maybe. Yeah, I mean, no, I, it, I think that's, uh, somebody's got to be the first, right? Yeah. 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 And, and I think uh, the maggots have always, one of the other things we were, we were the first, you'd go to rugby tournaments in the springtime, and everybody's kind of chilly, and we were construction workers. Right. So we had Carhartt <laughs> jackets, and we had Carhartt coveralls, and we would wear those in the sidelines. Well, yeah. and pretty soon you started seeing the other teams doing that. So right. We're innovators. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Bringing Carhartt to life in Montana. Right? Yeah. Like, yeah. So let me finish with this. What is your what What are you proudest of when you say I'm a maggot? What does that mean to you? What make, gives you the most pride? Uh, just playing a sport that wasn't uh, it, it wasn't a highlighted sport it, it's um, just something a, a little bit different and, and yet uh, you know it, it's it's evolving and, and coming into it but I I think just I'm, I'm proud that I've the mental attitude that it's given me just uh, Never, never having to be afraid of trying something new. Uh, never try to. Never afraid of backing out of something too. So, yeah, it's just, and, and the maggots are known. They're world. Right. That's true. Renowned, and and I know I've been part of that. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that, that, and and it, because of places we've gone, and I've got a couple ties that I've been yeah. given from the other teams. You know. Yep. Uh, Tourist, uh, the one was a tourist, their, their tourist award tie. Oh, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Just for being the friendly yeah. guy around. But, so I, I think there's pride in it that the maggots are world renowned. Awesome. And that's what we have done. Thank you very much. You bet. Appreciate it. You bet. Thank you.